Albedo is something that shows up on exams enough to where it's worth speaking about. Um, they often ask it for you more sort of qualitatively just to describe it. Sometimes it shows up as quantitatively. We have to actually uh, write an equation. Uh, but in this case right here, do a calculation. It's really pretty straightforward. It's albedo, first of all, it's the total scattered power over the total incident power. And we'll talk about that. Um, I just like this one of uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson here saying, maybe you should trust a scientist who spent years studying the subject instead of some neck beard on the internet. These are the ones like climate change skeptics and people who don't think that this stuff is happening. It's absolutely happening. Come on. Um, I mean, there's a lot of really natural processes that can, uh, you know, that are involved in this. So this, this isn't rocket science here. This isn't that complicated. Uh, so we have this thing that we define as the albedo, and this is on your formula booklets. You don't have to memorize this. So it's a total scattered power over total incident power. Now you might be not sure like what does scattered mean? It means like reflected. So in this case right here, for example, this little diagram that I gave you, this is like the earth here and there's some clouds and whatever else. Uh, this right here, we could say uh, this is the incident you know, so we could say this is the incident radiation, so we can call it uh, power if we wanted to. This is joules per second or watts. This here would be what's out. You know, this is what comes out. And this is what's this is the scattered power is this. So I mean, one other way to say it is you can say it's I out over I in. That's another way to look at it. Now it's the sort of the it's the intensity of light that comes out uh, versus the intensity of light that goes in. So this is one way to look at it. Now, what happens is this then, uh, I mean, there's a lot of processes involved here in what actually causes uh, the eye out to be different than eye in. Obviously, uh, the sun's radiation comes in and we have this atmosphere. It's like this blanket that keeps us warm. And the way by which it keeps us warm, because we have gases in there, those gases can absorb some of the infrared radiation. And of course, those then are re-radiated into the atmosphere. And so that sort of, that warms the planet. It acts like a warming effect here, uh, which in a way is good. Because without it, you know, the Earth's temperature would be much, much lower. We probably couldn't have liquid water on it. But then as soon as uh, we have the atmosphere, it warms us up. It also keeps pressure uh, such that we could have liquid water. So all these things are actually really important. Um, so the important thing that as far as albedo is concerned, though, is just looking at what is scattered outwards. In other words, what is I out versus I in? And that's it. So try to think about this then, because a lot of times the IB questions you'll be asked on exams will be something like um, talking about what albedo would do, or you know you might be asked about like if uh, a lot of glaciers melted, what would happen? So you need to think about first what albedo actually is and does. Um, keep in mind what a large albedo would be. For example, high albedo like one, for example, what does that mean? It means that I out is pretty much I in. In other words, you know if so if it was like albedo was one. Uh, this would be, you know, everything reflects back. So this would be like a surface where, you know, imagine there's no atmosphere whatsoever. And it's just like a pure mirror. Then, you know, everything that comes in is reflected out. So that means, you know, you'd have one that reflects perfectly. Whereas if it was I equal uh, A, sorry, equals zero, what would that mean? It means nothing is going out. It means everything is going in, so it absorbs. Now, if we think about the color of things, it reflects, that means it's very white, right? If it, it absorbs things, whereas things that, uh, sorry, that reflect things, things that absorb are usually very black and literally in color. So if you see a surface, for example, like um, we can look out into space and we can see that there's a lot of um, objects that are floating out there, you know, things like asteroids and these other objects. And if they're very, very dark, they're very hard to see, aren't they? Because they won't really reflect much of the light. That's why they're actually hard to detect. So some of these objects that are, you know, uh, orbiting around the sun that might be of interest to us because maybe they'll hit us or something like that, they're a little bit hard to find because they might have a very low albedo. Whereas something has a high albedo, well, then it reflects a lot. It's very white. So that's why I said a high albedo this is like a nice little trick. High albedo, very, very bright. It reflects a lot. Uh, so remember that question I asked, said like, what would happen then, uh, you know, if global warming continues and all the glaciers melted? Try to think what would happen to the albedo. If the glaciers melted, wouldn't we lose a lot of the glaciers? And glaciers reflect. So that means then the albedo would go down. And what would happen then if the albedo goes down? Of course, that means we're absorbing more light. That means actually the temperature would even increase even more. So it's like these these uh, glaciers melting on Earth would actually make the temperature go up even faster. So this could be kind of bad. You could also talk about the, how you could change the temperature of the Earth. I mean, I saw some calculations done by a brilliant physicist. Uh, he had actually said, um, you know, you could actually really help with global warming if you just painted everything on Earth, uh, you know, 
black or white. So just think about it. If you paint everything white, you'd reflect more light. That means you would uh, raise the albedo, which means you would lower the temperature on Earth. So imagine if you had paint and you painted all the rooftops in the Earth white, for example. Uh, that would actually make, it should make a change in our albedo of the Earth. So kind of amazing sort of ideas, especially people are like, oh, how are we going to curb emissions, whatever. Like, ah, if you just paint everything white, it would solve a lot of it. Well, what if all the roads were white and all the roofs were white? Turns out that would make a big difference. I don't know why people don't do it. I guess it's the cost of paint, but hey, we also want to live on Earth, right? So this is really important stuff. Uh, what I think is really interesting about high albedo is I was wondering, what is the highest albedo thing? Um, and it turns out in our solar system, at least it's Saturn's got one moon called Enceladus. And that one has an albedo of pretty much uh, one. It's 0.99. What that means then is that and this is a real picture of it. Isn't that amazing? Um, so we've got, for example, uh, light then that comes in. Basically, almost all of it will come back out again. So in other words, I in and I out, it's pretty much the same. In other words, it reflects pretty much everything and acts like a mirror, which is really weird that it's so high because there's a lot of space dust out there. And you would think that if it's out there and it's sort of just, you know, going in orbit, it should be, it should be attracting lots of dust. I mean, all the other objects in the solar system seem to do that. So this tells us there must be some processes on this moon that are renewing the surface to sort of make it water again. In other words, to sort of clean off the dust or at least cover it with a layer of water, which then of course freezes. And if you look at its surface, you can see also it has very small number of craters. These impact craters also tell you something about the age. If you don't see many craters, that means it hasn't been hit by many things. That means the surface is relatively young. So that tells you that there are some processes at work on Enceladus uh, that are actually renewing its surface. And the biggest, most obvious one is there is very likely a source of liquid H2O underneath the icy surface that, you know, through these cracks and fissures in the ice, it's sort of seeping up and sort of basically covering things up, making like a, like we do in Canada in the winter, right? You sort of, you know, put a hose out on the snow, for example, then all that water will freeze and it makes ice and you can go skate on the ice. How Canadian is that? But that's what people really do. So we have that some, some sort of process like that happening on Enceladus, for example. So albedo itself, pretty important, but not that complicated. You just got to remember that's uh, just I out over I in. And remember that high albedo is very bright and reflects a lot. So if you're asked for these sort of qualitative questions about what would happen, you know, with glaciers, just think, what do glaciers do to the shininess of the earth? Because, of course, that will affect the albedo, right? If you make things more shiny, you raise the albedo. That means actually the temperature on Earth would go down. So that would actually be helpful. But as the glaciers melt, bad news, because, of course, that would make the shininess of the Earth go down. That means we would actually absorb more, and that means the temperature would increase even more.